brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I just got word from Brother Muhyiddin that uh, one of our brothers who, mashallah, regularly comes to the masjid is ill. Um, he's not here, but mashallah, his wife is here and she has requested that we make dua for him. So please join me as we pray for him as well as our other brothers and sisters who are also ill or sick or suffering. Allahumma shfi akhana hadha wa sa'ira marda muslimin. Allahumma rabba nas alhib al ba's. Ishfi anta shafi. Ishfi anta shafi. Ishfi anta shafi. La shifa'a illa shifa'u. Shifa'an la yugadiru saqma. Allahumma khuffif alamahum. Wa yassir lahum umurahum. Allahumma khuffif alamahum. Wa yassir lahum umurahum. Allahumma alhimhumu sabra wa thabat. والرضا بما قضيت اللهم ألهمهم الصبر والثبات والرضا بما قضيت اللهم أجرهم في مصيبتهم واخلف لهم خيرا منها يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا فسهل لنا ويسل لنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا وفقنا جميعا لما تحب وترضاه من قول وعمل اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضاه من قول وعمل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خير Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Indeed, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, sustainer, and controller of the universe and all within. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I trust that everyone is doing well. Uh, often people ask about forgiveness and about tawbah and istighfar. And they're worried about the past life or the life of sin they might have lived for many years. And of course, the scholars have taught um, in lots of details about tawbah, repentance and istighfar, seeking forgiveness. And they have talked about the conditions and so on. But I want to share with you a hadith or an athar that's related, um, an incident that happened with Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, in which he mentions if I can call it a different or another avenue of forgiveness. And this is actually related to parents. And I know recently we've been talking quite a bit about parents and the type of relationship we ought to have to them and the fact that our relationship with them does have an impact, positively or negatively, in our own personal and private lives. So as we pursue what we believe is our happiness, we need to be aware that the relationship with our parents will affect what we strive for in our own lives. In this athar, and this was related by Imam al-Bukhari in his book Al-Adab al-Mufrad. As you may or may not know, Imam al-Bukhari did not only compile the Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, he, he compiled other books, he wrote other books as well. The Sahih, of course, is the one that he is most famous for. And it's the one that for perhaps most people brings immediate benefit, mashaAllah. Because of the fact that the ahadith in his Sahih are, or have been verified to be Sahih, to be authentic. But he has written extensively on other uh, uh, issues and topics, in particular, he is, a, as we might say these days, a prolific writer or author regarding the biographies of narrators of hadith. He had in-depth knowledge. See, he didn't just memorize hadith, but he had the skills, the practical skills necessary to also verify his hadith. 
So it's one thing to learn the hadith and memorize it. But it's a different story altogether to have the skills to examine or study a hadith and its isnad and in the end give a judgment whether the hadith is authentic or not. Uh, one of the topics or issues that is very important in the, the skill of being able to verify hadith or to give them hukum judgment is to have knowledge of the narrators of hadith. Because remember, between the Imam Bukhari and the Prophet salam, there, there is a chain of people, a number of people, through which this information from the Prophet reached Al Imam al Bukhari. In these people, like the teacher of Bukhari and his teacher and so on, we call them, uh, you know, they refer to as the Isnad, the chain of narration. And you need to know about each individual in this chain to make sure that the information is correct. So knowledge of these narrators is an important aspect of this process of verifying hadith. And mashallah, al-Imam Bukhari uh, is one of the very knowledgeable scholars in this area as well. So he wrote many books. One of them is Al-Adab al-Mufrad. And this is a book that he dedicated specifically to Islamic values, Islamic morals or etiquettes. And interestingly enough, he began this book by starting with the relationship with parents, which is some indication from him of the importance of this matter, this issue of relationship with our parents. So he read this hadith in, in his book, Al-Adab al-Mufrad. And by the way, the book is available with, uh, with an English translation in one big volume. In this hadith, a man came to Ibn Abbas عنهما, and he told him that he had committed some what he considered really horrible sins. <laughs> and he asked Ibn Abbas for his advice and guidance as to how to achieve Allah's forgiveness. And Ibn Abbas asked the man, he said, are your parents alive? And the man said, no. So Ibn Abbas said to them, then you know what? Do tawbah and istighfar. Repent to Allah. Make dua and repent to Allah and ask Him for forgiveness for the things you have done. Afterwards, one of the students of Ibn Abbas who witnessed this, he asked him. He said, why did you ask the man if his parents were alive? And Ibn Abbas said to him, I asked him if his parents are alive because I do not know of any other thing that will bring someone closer to Allah than birrul walidain, than doing good to your parents. It seems from this conversation with Ibn Abbas that if the man's parents were alive, he would have told the man, well, go and do good to your parents. Because he said, remember the end, he said that I do not know of anything any deed, any good deed that can bring a person closer to Allah than birrul walidain, than being kind to parents, than having a good relation, right? The word bir here means having a good relation. It doesn't mean being kind once a year or once a month. It means a regular habit and lifestyle of being kind and generous uh, uh, with your parents. So subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, for those of us especially who have our parents alive, this is another avenue of forgiveness for our sins. Of course, we should make tawbah and istighfar. But it's amazing that having a good relationship with parents uh, is such a good deed that it is also a way and a means and a source of forgiveness of, forgiveness of sins. So as we live our lives, and we ask for forgiveness from our sins, we should remember, bear in mind, that Allah has given us our parents. And in them, He has given us a wonderful opportunity to get closer to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, if in order for one to get closer to Allah, you have to have your sins forgiven. So our parents, brothers and sisters, they are a tremendous blessing that Allah has given to us. Sadly, sometimes when parents get old, especially if they 
become somewhat dependent on us. See, as long as they're independent and they can do things for themselves, life is easy for us because, you know, we don't really have to do many things for them. But once they get much older and they depend more and more on us, you know, they need groceries, they're, ne they're no longer able to walk over to the grocery store or they can't carry, you know, the, all the groceries, so they need someone to help them out. Then, at this time in their lives, you know, we have a tendency, or some of us at least have a tendency to look at them as, you know, as a burden. But as you can see from this uh, exchange with Ibn Abbas, they're not a burden. They're actually a source of great blessings, if only we realize that. If only we realize that we, if we can take some time from our own personal lives and aspirations and objectives and give it to them, keep that good relationship with them, that this is a, a, a wonderful chance for us to also be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to look at our parents with different eyes. We need to look, our, look at our parents from a different perspective. And we can't ask for a better perspective than what the Prophet والسلام, and what Islam has offered to us and offered to mankind. That our parents should not be viewed as a burden. That in as much as sometimes looking after their needs may put some stress on us and burden on us, that we should actually understand that this is a wonderful opportunity to reap the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, and I might have shared this hadith in Sahih Muslim, once the Sahaba heard him saying, Rahima anfu, shame upon him. Compliance were curious. They said, shame upon whom, O Messenger of Allah? He said, the person who, whose parents attain old age while he or she is still alive, both of them are one of them. And yet the person دَخَلَ النَّهِ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ أَبَوَيْهِ عِنْدَ الْكِبَرِ أَوْ أَحَدَهُمَا فَدَخَلَ النَّهِ The person who happens to be alive when their parents become old and dependent on them. Either one or both of them, and yet the person enters the fire. Shame on this person. What, this, what it means obviously is when our parents get old, it's an excellent opportunity for us to go to paradise by what? By serving them. That's how we need to start seeing our parents. We need to start looking at them as a source or a method through which we will go to paradise insha'Allah. So I wanted to share this incident with Ibn Abbas because I believe it adds a very important dimension to this whole issue of parents and the sort of relationship we should have with them. I you know, didn't intend to bore you with more information about parents and how we should treat them and deal with them. But I believe this is an important aspect because it has very relevant and practical implications for you and I. It doesn't matter how young or old we are, we will always be the children of our parents. And we hope and pray that the way, the, tr the kindness we treat our parents with, that our own children will treat us with the same level of kindness. But we have to teach them. And an important method of teaching our own children how they should relate with us and deal with us is by example of how we deal with our own parents, their grandparents. Our behavior, brothers and sisters, whether we realize it or not, is an important method of teaching for our own children as to how they should deal with their own parents, how they should deal with their own spouses, all right, our sons learn from us, their fathers, well, okay, this is how a father or a husband is supposed to deal with his wife. Our daughters learn from us and, and their mothers, well, this is how, you know, the wife is supposed to deal with her husband. So we are important teachers, very important teachers with great impact on the training and the knowledge and the education of our children, and we need to realize that. So how we treat our parents they will learn from us how to treat us when we get older. And subhanAllah, I hope and I pray that we can begin to see our parents not as a burden, 
not as interruptions in our busy lives and schedules, but a source of blessings for us, a way and a means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a means of attaining paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message and that we will be motivated and inspired to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to develop that good relationship with our parents so that they will be happy with us. And through that happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us. And so we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He cause us not to be among those who treat their parents with disrespect, those who do not care about their parents, and those who turn their backs on their parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from the straight path, and may He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings, and may He protect us from deviations and from the temptations of shaitan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.